the 73rd British Academy Film Awards BAFTAs, which held at the Royal Albert Hall in London, honored the best national and foreign films of 2019. World War I story 1917 dominated the BAFTA Film Awards, attended by some of the world's biggest film stars. All right, the BAFTA Film Awards, which took place in London last night, underneath a cloud of controversy over the issue of diversity, Within the film industry, it uh, was a unique experience. Uh, 1917, which saw the film set in 1917, scooped most of the night's biggest prizes with gongs, uh, also going to Joker uh, for Sama and Parasite. Joining us live from London for more on last night's BAFTAs is a RISE correspondent, Afwa Adom. But before we get started, let's take a look at this package put together by Afwa, who was there live. The BAFTAs is the biggest night on the British film calendar, where the greats and the good of the industry come together to celebrate their achievements over the past 12 months. But there was a huge elephant in the room in the Royal Albert Hall behind me where the BAFTAs took place. Diversity, or the lack thereof. It meant that actresses like Margot Robbie and Scarlett Johansson were nominated twice for awards, whilst the likes of Jennifer Lopez, Lupita Nyongo, Cynthia Erivo, and Aquafina missed out on Best Actress Gongs. Now, Aquafina was nominated for the Rising Star Award, but many felt she could have been nominated for the Best Actress Prize. So, who took home the biggest awards of the night? Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. <laughs> Of its pack leading 11 nominations going into the event, Joker made good on three prizes. Joaquin Phoenix gave a career-defining performance in the title role, which earned him the leading actor prize. But his acceptance speech hit home at the awards with a direct plea to the BAFTAs to do much better when it comes to diversity, with a takedown of systemic racism and oppression within the film industry. Uh, I feel very honored and privileged uh, to be here tonight. <clears throat> Baptists have always been very supportive of, of my career and I'm deeply appreciative. <clears throat> but I have to say that I also feel um, conflicted because so many of my fellow actors that are deserving don't have that same privilege. Uh, I think that we send a very clear message to people of color that you're not welcome here. This is not a self-righteous condemnation because uh, I'm ashamed to say that I'm part of the problem. I have not uh, done everything in my power to ensure that the sets I work on are inclusive, uh, but I think that it's more than just having sets that are multicultural. I think that um, we have to really do the, the hard work to truly understand systemic racism. I think that it is the obligation of the people that have created and perpetuate and benefit from a system of oppression to be the ones that dismantle it. So that's on us. Thank you. Sam Mendes for 1917. Sam Mendes' first World War drama, 1917, has dominated the 2020 BAFTAs, winning both Best Film and Best British Film. With seven awards, it was the most garlanded film of the night, also winning Best Director for Mendes and Best Cinematography. And the BAFTA is awarded to Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger was named Best Actress for her turn as Judy Garland in Judy, while the supporting acting categories went to Laura Dern for Marriage Story and Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, who made a Brexit joke and a message read out by his co-star, Margot Robbie. Hey, Britain. Heard you just became single. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Wishing you the best with the divorce settlement, blah, blah, blah. He then says, uh, thank you to the Academy for this extreme honour. The award goes to Parasite. Best original screenplay went to Bong Joon-ho's Parasite, which also wins the award for the best film not in the English language. Michael Ward. Michael Ward, star of Top Boy and Blue Story, was named the BAFTA Rising Star. In his acceptance speech, he thanked his mum, who was sitting in the audience. I want to say thank you to my mum for believing in me and sacrificing everything for all of us to be here. What I want to say is that to people that are watching at home, like looking at me, um, 
that honestly life didn't have to be this way man you have to see the opportunities and um, just see a vision and yeah man thank you guys thank you for Sama for Sama a film about a young mother's experience of the Syrian civil war on best documentary the Irishman, Netflix's great hope for the Oscars, won nothing. A disappointment for stars Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, who flew in for the occasion. Andy Serkis was honoured with the Outstanding British Contribution to Film Award, presented to him by Sir Ian McKellen. With the Oscar So White and BAFTA So White hashtags trending strongly on social media, many are calling for an overhaul in the voting system for major award ceremonies such as these, so that diversity isn't just a trend, but becomes part of the core values of the film industry. Afia Adom, Arise News at the Royal Albert Hall. All right, uh, welcome to the morning show. Afia, Afia it's a pleasure, you know, uh, just uh, watching your great work uh, as regards the BAFTAs. But Afwa, tell us, uh, who are the biggest winners on the night? I'm, I'm sure we've pretty much seen that in that package, but uh, we'd like to hear from you. Who are the biggest winners of the night? I mean, Sam Mendes did quite well. 1917, still yet to see the movie. Great movie, isn't it? Oh, yes, Sam Mendes did incredibly well with 1917. It was leading the pack with 11 nominations, a huge number, and Joker was close second with 10 nominations. But uh, in 1917, ended up taking home seven prizes. So we have Best Director there for Sam Mendes. It also won Best Film and Best British Film, picked up a prize for cinema widely expected you know it was such um, an iconic piece of work with Sam Mendes from Sam Mendes there is famous for being shot in one long continuous shot so when you watch the movie you feel like you're continuously in a moment in time in 1917 and that's what he really really wanted to achieve so of course it did incredibly well now Joker also did really really well that had uh, 10 nominations it came away with three and of course we saw Joaquin it Phoenix giving that incredible speech on the BAFTA stage there talking about his win uh, uh, and talking about how he felt after his win. So 1917 and Joker were the prizes that we expected, were the films that we're expected to do very, very well. Now for Sama as well, what an incredible piece of documentary making. And that got the top gong there and that was very well deserved. There were massive cheers around the BAFTA auditorium when that prize was given out. And congratulations. Congratulations uh, to the director there. Um, Parasite, another one that did very well. Now, I would have liked to have seen that take home best film, but it did get a best film not in an English language and original screenplay, and I thought that was very, very well awarded as well. Now, Klaus, which was the animated Christmas movie, um, that took home the prize for best animation as well. You also had um, a soundtrack prize that went to Joker too. So, yes, it was very much a night dominated by 1917 and dominated by Joker as well. The top four acting prizes. Um, so you had Joaquin Phoenix there who took home Best Actor. You have Brad Pitt who took home Best Supporting Actor for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Renee Zellweger took home the Best Actress Prize for Judy. And Laura Dern picked up the Best Supporting Actress Prize for her turn in Marriage Story. Now it's thought that these could be Oscar predictions. You never know because these four have in fact picked up Critics' Choice, Screen Actors Guild Awards, Golden Globes, each of them picking the, up those awards in each category. So it looks like uh, the BAFTAs followed suit with that, and it looks like it could happen for the Oscars as well. Okay, okay, uh, Afia. Uh, Afia, but, but the shocking part for me yesterday night was the Irishman. How come the Irishman did not win anything? I mean, Netflix pumped a lot into it. A lot of people will say it's a great story. Had all the greats in it. You know, had the likes of Al Pacino in it. How come the Irishman didn't do that well? at the BAFTAs? Do you know, it's a really, really good question. In fact, The Irishman hasn't fared very well in award season at all. To be honest, it hasn't picked up many awards. And many people thought that it would. You know, it's Martin Scorsese, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, all these, Joe Pesci, all these amazing actors on screen together in this Martin Scorsese epic. But it just hasn't done well at all at award season. Didn't pick up 
Emmy Awards last night and was nominated for quite a few. And it just seems like it was definitely last night's biggest loser. It just seems that it's not translating when it comes to judging, when it comes to voting amongst all these different Academy Awards members. Now, it could be because it's the Netflix influence. It could be because it's deemed perhaps as a lesser form of cinema. And, you know, you've had um, people like Steven Spielberg uh, talking about Netflix and talking about the way that these films are produced for this huge streaming giant and saying that it's not proper cinema. You know, Steven Spielberg also went on to criticize the Marvel films as well as we very much know. But yes, you're right in saying that the Irishman didn't pick up anything. I mean, Al Pacino was in attendance for the awards. He took a tumble on the red carpet. Um, and do you know what? I must admit, he is looking, bless him, a bit older than he has done for a long time. Certainly no CGI happening there. Um, but yes, definitely, the Irishman absolutely not picking up anything anywhere award along this award season, but it's not saying that that could change next week with the big one with the Oscars. But the Irishman definitely felt to be last night's biggest loser, unfortunately. Besides the uh, uh, Irishman, were there any other movies who seem to have been shown last night? As well as, you know, you spoke about Joaquin Phoenix's speech and you said the awards were made in controversy. We're going to go on a short break very soon, but I want you to tell us why. But definitely start with some of the losers last night. Well, yes. The BAFTAs were mired in controversy because of the lack of diversity. You had 20 nominees in the leading actor and supporting actor and actresses prizes. And out of those 10, 20 nominees, there was not one single person of color. And you haven't had a single female director nominated since 2013. So the BAFTA So White hashtag has been trending since the nominations were announced earlier on this year, back in January. And that was um, a real cloud that hung over the red carpet last night. And it was something that was on the minds of every Everybody who was talking on the red carpet, all the press and reporters were asking about diversity, asking about this issue. You know, it's not just when it comes to uh, colour, it's when it comes to sex as well. And yes, you had Joaquin Phoenix who talked very openly right, right, Af about Af his Af place Af in the world. Af Afia, Af sorry to interject, we'll quickly go on a quick answer. break. We'll come back to you and take those thoughts from you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Morning Show. Thank you for staying with us. We're still joined by Afia in our London studios talking about the BAFTAs 2020. Now, before the break, you were landing on your points regarding the lack of diversity in the BAFTAs. Oh, yes, absolutely. We were talking about that. And it's a great place to pick up because, of course, we had Joaquin Phoenix's um, amazing speech that he gave last night uh, when he picked up the prize for Best Actor, when he talked about um, how he felt picking up that prize. And he said, you know, we send a very clear message to people of color that you're not welcome here. And he said, I don't think anybody wants a handout or preferential t treatment. He said people just want to be acknowledged and appreciated and respected for their work. And when he said that in the auditorium, there was sort of there was a beat, if you were, where everybody was quite silent and looked very, very awkward before the applause broke out. And I think there was a real sort of moment in the room where people were like, he has said something really, really pertinent that we're all aware of, and he was kind of saying what everybody else was thinking. Um, and so Lulu Wang, who is director of Chinese-American drama The Farewell, which was nominated for Best Screenplay, called um, the, the uncomfortable, called out the uncomfortable silence and the long, noticeable moment when he said that. And of course, The Farewell, it's an amazing film that came out earlier on this year. It starred Aquafina, who was nominated for the Rising Star Award, but she was one of the people that a lot of people said should have been on the list for a Best Actress Prize. And as I said, you had 20 nominations uh, for Leading Actor and Actress and Supporting Actor and Actress, and all the nominee, all those nominees were white as well. And so even Graham Norton, who was our host for the evening, he opened um, by saying, the year, this is the year when white men finally broke through 11 nominations for Joker, the story of a white man who makes himself even whiter. And he also joked that once upon a time in Hollywood, hark back to 50 years ago when film was a misogynistic male dominated industry resistant to change and some people saying that you know what he was talking about the time that we are in right now right uh, I, I, I think uh, that there's an understanding that uh, Prince Williams was there yesterday he said something if we could drill to that uh, Afia then I come back for my next question uh, to see 
uh, what Prince Williams did say yesterday. I mean, it's pretty much in the eye of the storm at a time like this for the British royal uh, family and Prince Williams speaking at the BAFTAs. If we can see that, then I, then I come to the next question. I would t still talk a little bit about uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Catherine and I are once again really, really delighted to join you all this evening. Tonight we celebrate another year of exceptional filmmaking, and I'm thrilled that all those involved have been recognised. I'm particularly proud to stand here tonight, having served as BAFTA's president for the last 10 years. However, I must admit, I don't know whether I should be proud or slightly alarmed about the number of winners over the last decade who have betrayed members of my own family. <laughs> Both here in the UK and in many other countries across the world, we are lucky to have incredible filmmakers, actors, producers, directors and technicians, men and women from all backgrounds and ethnicities enriching our lives through film. Yet in 2020, and not for the first time in the last few years, we find ourselves talking again about the need to do more to ensure diversity in the sector and in the awards process. That simply cannot be right in this day and age. I know that both Pippa, Chair of BAFTA, and Amanda, BAFTA CEO, share that frustration and continue to work tirelessly to ensure that creative talent is discovered and supported. BAFTA take this issue seriously and following this year's nominations, have launched a full and thorough review of the entire awards process. I mean, this pretty much segues into what uh, Joaquin Phoenix spoke about, the change starting with the structure of those who run the awards and what can be done to tackle the diversity issue. Afia? It's a really good question. You know, in principle, you're making a really good point. They are saying that this is not the first time and it's you know, that we've been talking about diversity and it feels like we are having this conversation every few years. And it also feels like when it comes to diversity, there's a couple of problems here. First of all, uh, the film industry cannot do more than one type of diversity at the same time. This year, they seem to have done no type. But it seems like one year, if they're supporting women, if you've got female directors nominated, then you've got less people of colour nominated. And if you've got people of colour nominated, you have less women nominated. And if you have people of colour nominated, they tend to be African-American or black. And then that means that, you know, you have the Asian-American community who are coming through, you know, if, if films like um, where you had uh, Crazy Rich Asians last year that missed out on a whole bunch of nominations, you know, and The Farewell this year, which has missed out on nominations as well. It seems that the film industry can't seem to traverse diversity properly. And this year, they haven't traversed it at all. They haven't tried to. But this could be um, down to a few kind of issues. First of all, the people that make up the voting uh, public when it comes to these type of awards. So the members of the academies, there's around 6,700 people who vote for BAFTAs, and some of those people vote for Oscars as well. You have to change the people who vote. They have to be more diverse because people will vote for, namely vote for what they see. They'll vote for people to look like themselves. So if the voting, uh, the people that vote are dominated by white men, then you're going to have more films that star white men making the grade, making the top cut. And unfortunately, that is what it is. But there's also an issue of the amount of films that the people who vote for have to watch. And there's a heck of a lot of films. It can be up to uh, 600 hours of viewing time that producers, directors, creatives within the film industry, they have to take out or they would have to take out if they watched every single film that passed across their desk. And frankly, they just don't do that. If you have a film like Queen and Slim that comes out later on in the season, it's less likely to get watched, even, even though it is eligible for this, uh, this year's um, award season. Because, it's, because it comes out later, people have less time to watch it and therefore it doesn't end up with nominations. So there is a few 
issues and a few problems when it comes to the way that these type of films are voted for. So you have to change the makeup of the film industry. Like I said, you have to make sure that the film industry, that diversity is in its core values and isn't just a trend. And that has to be every type of diversity. That has to be color, that has to be sex, it has to be religion, it has to be a through a thorough top-down and filtered approach. And without that, then nothing will be done. But there's a real feeling in the film industry that yes, Joaquin Phoenix made this amazing speech and other people like Michael Ward and, and commented on diversity and the issues surrounding it. But some people feel like, okay, Joaquin Phoenix has said this, people will talk about his speech for a while. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, unless nothing changes, then unfortunately nothing changes. Unfortunately, I, I have to agree with you. If we don't start having these conversations and implementing them, then we don't have a way forward. Now, let's look at the BAFTAs fashion, my personal favorite. Who got it right, in your opinion? Let's have this. Oh, yes, BAFTA's fashion, and that's absolutely where it's at. So the BAFTA's was trying to be sustainable this year, and they tried to encourage people to wear a look that they'd worn before, not necessarily to the BAFTA's, but perhaps to another award ceremony and to recycle um, those looks. So a lot of people were coming out and wearing things that, in fact, they had worn before. And I'm loving seeing that. When I say it was sustainable as well, it was a plant-based meal, so meat-free, um, vegan-friendly meal. And yes, there was a lot of um, there was a lot of monochrome we saw on the red carpet. It's obviously, our men are always looking amazing in suits. You've got Dan Lin there, um, and there was a lot of color as well, which I thought was amazing. You, Jody Turner Smith. Uh, her star in Queen and Slim was wearing an absolutely gorgeous yellow dress. You also had Naomi Aki posing in a yellow dress as well. Um, so yes, there was a lot of um, sustainable fashion. Like I said, people wearing things that they have worn before um, and people encouraged to do that. Um, there was a lot of sponsored diamonds um, as well by Chopin and Tiffany. Um, you had the FX team from the Irishman posing there in some great suits. Hopefully they didn't have any CGI. Right. Uh, great one, Afia. Thank you so much. At least it doesn't put the pressure on people to get the new designers and the likes. And you did yeah. look really nice yourself, Afia. <laughs> I love that jacket. <laughs> All right, that brings us to the end of the show today. I'm Rafaya Sini. I'm Shaito Atigari. Thank you so much for watching. You can also follow us on all the social media handles showing now on the screen. This is Arise News.